about characters in Hebrews 11. How many guys can say Hebrews 11 is living legends? Legends of their time that continue to go on from day to day to day to day. Living legends, people that I look up to today. They are people who decided to say, I will stick it out no matter the cost. And so that's why today, I want to, my title of my talk is this. And if you're taking notes, it says that 90% of people taking notes go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to go to heaven, you better get your notes out. Totally joking, that's not true. Not true at all. <laughs> okay. um, but I want you to title these notes, uh, Courage in the Face of Fear. Courage in the Face of Fear. I don't know about you. Um, but I'm a very fearful person. Very fearful person. And so I'm going to pray that God helps me out today because I will tell you this. Um, I need God today and so do you. And I'm going to pray that you do some work with me today. You ready to do some work? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the times we get up here and we look at the preachers and we look at people speaking. We're like, uh, dance for me, monkey boy. Dance. You know what I mean? But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to ask you to do is realize that your faith takes work and today takes work. And so we're going to be here together for about another half an hour. Can you guys hang out with me for a half an hour? And I will promise you I'll be done about 10.15. About 10.15. It's a pastor joke that we're going to try our best to hit 10.15. <laughs> I like to have fun. I believe really church should be enjoyed and not bored. Yes. Uh, that's one of my biggest things. And so uh, I'll, get you I'll get you in and out. But I'm going to ask you for 30 minutes. Can you work for yourself because I believe your faith needs you? I'm going to say that again. Because I want that to see you. Your faith needs you. You can't be in, uninvolved in your walk with God. That's right. Ooh, I love it. I'll tell you what. Let's go forward. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. I thank you, God, for the this room. I thank you, God, for the opportunity to be at this incredible church. And I believe God's going to do something huge in this church. And Lord, as I take a step back like I always do, I ask you to take a step forward because in myself, I'm not the greatest communicator, but inside of you, I can do all things. And so Lord, I ask you, Jesus, that as we move forward, as we continue this path of following you, that you give us wisdom, clarity, and direction. God, I, I pray for the Denver Broncos that maybe they'll have a team this year. And you're my friend. Hey, man. If you're not a Denver Bronco fan, I feel sorry for you. Hey, but today we're going to um, go to Hebrews 11. We're going to start it off. I want to give you the intro to Hebrews 11. Um, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, God is a coffee guy. How do I know that? Because Hebrews. Hello. I'm so glad you got that joke. I'm telling you, I know it over well because that's the best I got. But Hebrews chapter 11, um, we're going to dive in deep and really look at this because I believe I want to show you who sticks out because I believe. When you become a legend, you stick out above the ground. And it says this, and this is in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 2. And I want you to listen to me, and I want you to engage. If you don't know where Hebrews is, it's okay. I will just follow along with me. We'll have story time with Hebrews often, okay? And it goes like this. It says, the first part goes this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Some of you are saying, I don't have that in mind. You're looking at me like it's not in there. It's because I'm reading from the message. And a lot of people are like, what about the message? Why should you read from the message? You see, a guy named Eugene Peterson looked at the world and said, man, the Bible is sometimes too hard to understand. So I'm going to give it in plain context. So that everyone, because everyone needs to know about Jesus. Amen. Everyone needs to understand the Bible. He says this. He says, the fundamental fact, everyone, if someone says, the fundamental fact of your existence, your ears should perk up and say, yes, what is it? Can you tell me more? I want to eat that. And he says, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything worth living. You want to know what's worth living? Having trust in God is the fundamental fact to make your life worth living. That's what he's saying, the trust. Let me ask you, do you trust God fully? Because yes. listen, we always say, if I ask that question, do you trust God? You'd be like, yeah, woo, 
Amen. To the moon block. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what our idea is. But let me ask you, do you really, truly trust God when it looks ugly? Do you truly trust God when fear is on your doorstep knocking down your door? Do you really trust God when you're like, this, if I, everything that I'm doing, does it really matter to this world? Do you really trust God? That's what he's trying to say because look what happens next. Oh, and I want you to get this. This is verse 2. It says, it's our handle on what we can't see. It's what you can't see. That's the act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors, the list of legends that distinguished our ancestors and set them above the crowd. Ooh, come on, somebody. If you don't know who I am, I get very excited about learning what made people different from other people. I'm an achiever. I want to achieve. That's why I started the church. I want something to happen in my life. I don't want to just be in existence. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he says the only way to realize what sticks out above the crowd is this. Having true trust in God when things don't look good. See, I, I, when I think of legends, legends, I think of people like John Elwood. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that was just, that's my next one. That's awesome. That's great because my next one is Joe Montana. You know who's better than all those? This guy named Michael Jordan. Come on. Not Kobe Bryant. Not any of those. He was the living legend, okay? Why? Because, and I, I wonder what really stuck out to them and made them above the crowd. Because, let's be real, every single one of them had ordinary lives but lived an extraordinary existence. What made them stand out above the crowd? Can I tell you what it was? That they didn't, they didn't get demolished under pressure. That actually, when pressure came, they had the power and the conviction to move when it felt like they couldn't. Michael Jordan, let's give you an example. He was cut from a sophomore high school team. You know what I made him do? Instead of wallowing in self-pity, which sometimes do we do? He said, no, 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 I'm going to step out. And he stepped out and he worked harder than any of the rest because guess what? A setback is when it comes to God. He's actually setting you up for something greater. Some, a lot of times we get frustrated about rejection. But let me tell you, your rejection is actually God's redirection in your life and he can't wait to show you. Amen. And so this is where I want us to get today because I, I, I noticed something is that if you're ever going to be a legend, can I tell you, your constant companion is always going to be you. If you want to do something in your life, which I believe everyone in this room does. That's why you're here. Come on. It's always going to be fear. Fear is the constant companion of champions. And it feels that way. Amen. I never felt like it. Just felt like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. This is where we are at. You see, the living legend I want to talk to you about today is a guy named David. I love David. David makes me feel like I'm like this. You know why? David was short. <laughs> David was short. David knew that man, I, I don't have it all together. I'm not so lovely. I'm not so beautiful. I don't, I'm not the best looking dude in the room, which I feel sometimes. Come on. And when I look at this, and I look at this man named David, you see, he comes into a situation, he walks into a situation of fear. How do I know this? Because everyone, everybody around him had an atmosphere of fear. When was this? Everyone knows the story of David and Goliath. Everyone in America has heard it, either in sports or I've heard it somewhere. David and Goliath. David and Goliath. And that's one of the big stories everyone knows about David and Goliath. But what you don't know, <laughs> yeah, he took down the giant, but a lot of people don't know the background to the highlight. Nobody wants to talk about the backstory of David. They want to talk about the highlight reel. Because we live in a world of highlight reels, right? Instagram is sharing with everybody and what they're doing. They're like, I'm here mowing my lawn while my best friend is on vacation in Bermuda. <laughs> True story. I'm angry about this. 
And this is the thing, we live in that, and so much so that when it comes to our life, when we see our behind the scenes, it doesn't really make us feel beneficial. It actually makes us feel worse. Can God really use my behind the scenes? Can God really use my mess? Can God really use my ugly? And I'm going to tell you today, I want you to understand today, I believe every champion has some ugly before he's great. I think, I think every champion lives in, in lack before they're living in legacy. And this is the thing. I think we kind of get this in our heart because let me just tell you today, everyone loves a good underdog story. Amen? Amen. That's why we love Rocky IV. It's at every boy's rite of passage in this world. Rocky IV. Drago, Rocky. Little dude takes out the big dude. That's all you got to know. But see, I want you to realize today this one man comes on a scene where a, a guy named Goliath, nine foot tall, taller than anyone in this room, is mocking and telling everybody in a time of champions fighting champions, saying, I dare you to send somebody out to me. I promise whoever you send out, I'll take him down. <coughs> and everyone around David is standing in fear, except David. Except David, because he knew something nobody else knew. He had a conviction in his heart that no matter where he walked, he would take care of him. Check this out. We're going to look at 1 Samuel 17, 31 through 37. 1 Samuel 17. This is going to be an excerpt. We're going to do this, and we're going to have a blast. Are you guys with me still? Are you with me still? Because I want to know how can you defeat Fear. How can we walk through fear? How can we get past fear? Check this out. 1 Samuel 17, 31. When the words that David spoke, basically he was telling everybody, I can defeat this guy, <laughs> was heard. They repeated them before Saul. Saul is the king. He is a tall dude. He's like Josh and me. I'm David. He's Saul. I mean, that's the difference. Saul is the best looking, like Josh. He was the best looking guy in the room. Everyone was like, ooh, look at that fine guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is who Saul was. And then they looked at David like, who is that guy? And so David is approaching Saul. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. You are a little boy. Can I tell you, I don't care if you're a teenager in this room. I believe teenagers are the next generation of church and believe they can do anything. Amen? Amen. All right, that should be a big cheer. Yeah. Come on, let me do that again. Teenagers are the next generation of church and we need to get everything we can for them. Amen? Yeah. 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 And David he said, but you're a youth and you haven't been a man of war ever. But David said to Saul, you don't understand my background. You don't get what I've been through. You don't understand what I've seen. He says, your, your servant used to keep sheep. I used to smell like sheep. I used to look like sheep. I mean, I used to keep sheep. And when they came, there came a lion or a bear to try to take one of those lambs, can I tell you, I went after him. Ooh, I love people who get a tenacious spirit that says no one's going to take what I own. I'm going to do what i got to do for God. He says, I'm going to go after him. I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him, and your servant has struck down both lions and bears. Now this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defiled the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord who delivered me, here it is, the big trust in God, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from his hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord will be with you. Can I tell you, I think the biggest problem is when fear arises in our hearts, when crazy situations, when a, an attack comes over our lives, you know what we do? We run to the attack instead of our conviction. We run to what's in front of us instead of the belief that we've had from the very beginning. You see, what I want you to understand, David had a conviction and a trust in someone he couldn't see to take care of everything out here. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Remember what we read in, in, in Hebrews 11. It says you have to have a handle on what you can't see. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Write this down. It's a, it's a big thing. 
It's time for us to get a handle on what we can't see before it gets a handle on me. It's time we get a handle on what we can't see before it gets a handle on me. That's a good rhyme. I wanted to say something that's sticky that you'll walk out and say, do I have a handle on what I can't see? You see, this is what I mean by that. This is what I mean by that. I think a lot of us in this room uh, live in fear, fear that we can't see. Sometimes, have you ever worried about something that never came out to be? Yeah. Oh, that's gonna happen. A car's gonna get repo. I don't know what to do, or oh my gosh, I, I, there's, there's President Trump's crazy. <laughs> America's falling apart. Hey guys, listen, we're still here because can I tell you? God still has the throne. He doesn't have the desk, he has the throne. And no matter who takes the desk, they always have the answer to the throne. Come on, somebody. <laughs> See, this, this is the thing. I, um, you know that every single one of us, we're born with two fears. You're in two fears, you're born with two fears. Number one, falling. That's why when you have an infant and they always fall away. <laughs> you're laughing because you have one. <laughs> That's the only fear, that's the first fear you have. The second fear is this, the fear of falling. Those are the only two fears you're born with. Can I tell you, every other fear is acquired. So God, in his instincts when you were born, put two fears in you, and that's all he wanted. Everything else is actually from something else. From some other place. From some other mentality. That is kind of, let's be real, not always going to come true. That's why when you see spiders, some of you are like, ah! But can I tell you, your foot is bigger than the spider. Believe in your foot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's funny how we do that. It's funny how we feel this. But what I really want you to realize is when David walked into the giant, he didn't go to the giant in his fear of himself. He didn't look to himself. And he said, I want to look to what I've been through. God has got me through so many things. He'll get me through this again. He's got me through a lion. He's got me through a bear. This guy, this is what he calls an uncircumcised Philistine, is just like the rest. I don't have to worry about that. But the problem is, I think the devil likes to come into our brain and say, give us this what we call short-term memory. He wants to tell you, don't remember when God got you through that. Oh, don't remember what happened there, because if you remember, you'll do something great for the kingdom of God. So remember that time that you were down, and this right now, this current situation is going to keep you. You're not going to get out of it. You can't walk past it. You can't move past it. You can't, you can't, you can't get out of it. You're stuck, man. Have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt like God's not doing anything in your life? You ever felt like, man, I can't keep going? Can I tell you that's... That's the devil saying, you're just never going to change. It's never going to change. You're stuck for life, dude. Ain't it great? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm joking about it, but let's be real. In real life instances, when you're home alone and you're by yourself, the giants in front of you, have you ever felt like you can't do it? Amen. Have you ever felt like, man, how do I get out of this situation? That's why, you know what I love, is that we don't, all, we don't just have the story of David, we actually have the mind of David. Let me tell you why, in the Psalms, we get to hear songs about the way David thought. And let me tell you, David was a very fearful person. He said, like, my enemies are all around me, I'm gonna die. Oh no, I'm gonna die. This is the cool part. He always had a conviction. And let me show you, Psalms 119. 97 through 98. If you don't have a Bible, write that down. Go back. Put it on the middle of your heart. And this is what David says. Oh, how I love your law. It's the meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies. For it is ever with me. It is never leaving me. It's not forsaking me. I'm going to meditate that it's going to get me through everything I'm going through. My conviction is not on what I see. If we can get a handle on what we can see, can I tell you, it, it, no, it's the imagination of what you can be. 
And he's saying, listen, I don't care what I see, because if I can get a handle on what I see, I can be something incredible. I can do something great. But you've got to get a handle on what you see. You've got to get what you see is not always what you're going to get. Because listen, God has something huge. He has something planned. And I believe, listen, a lot of you, if you don't, if you ever come to Echo, you ever heard about Echo, I'm big on, I believe God has a purpose for you. He has a place for you. He has something great for you, a plan to give you hope, to give you future, to give you something powerful. But you've got to believe that he has something great for you. You've got to believe it here and you'll see it here. excited about this, but some of you are like saying, how, how, how do I? Right? Because that's the thing. Is, how do I? Can I tell you? Write this down. Conquer your fear with conviction. Conquer your fear with conviction. Conquer your fear with conviction that God, if He's got you through in the past, He'll get you through again. He'll get you through again. So, how do we do this? How do we get a handle on what we can't see before it gets a handle on me? Number one is this. These are two things. It's going to be simple. I'm going to get out of here. I got 10 minutes. You guys with me? Yep. First thing is this. Don't be surprised by distractions. I think we're surprised that there's an attack on our life. We're surprised. Like every time something happens, who oh no, we freak out. Our first inclination is fear. Let's, let's just be real. Personal life in my life, because I'm not all perfect. <laughs> I look perfect, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like you'd be taller. I mean, have gray hair, I know. Be more fit. <laughs> got a tub, I know. I'm just having fun. Is that okay? Have fun. <laughs> this is uh, my, my first motivator, because I want you to realize fear is a motivator. My first motivator is always fear. And as a pastor, I'm getting everybody's fear dropped on my plate. That's right. They're like, things are, things are going down, our finances, our people, we, have, we don't have this, we don't have that, we, don't, we have no food, we have no jobs, our pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> I'm glad some of you got that joke. I mean, that's, I just have fear of being dumped on my desk. And I, and, I, and I look at it, and the first inclination in my heart is to go to fear. And it's a distraction. And even in David's life, he went to his brothers. You know his brother said, you're not ready for this, go home. He went to King Saul, and King Saul belittled him and says, oh, you're just too tiny. I'm afraid that if you do this, all of our, we be in captivity. No, 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 no. And then he went, <laughs> this was crazy. And then he went to the giant, and the giant's trying to provoke him, saying, come on in, if you get close to me, I'll chop your head off, so get close to me. But David knew something that no one else did. Everything about his field prepared him for his fight. Hear me, his field of being in the shepherds and having a slingshot, not getting close to a bear, took him to have the strength to say, you know what, if I approach you the way you want me to approach you, You'll take me down. So I have a different approach. I'm going to stand back. Let this out of us. Because if I get close to that fear, if I get close to that fear, if I let that fear become my God, if I let that fear become my motivator, it will take me down. It will take off my head. It will rip me down. But you know what? I'm going to back away from fear. And I'm going to let God guide my stones. I'm going to let God be the God of my life. I'm going to control only what I can control and let God control the rest. Because let's be real. If he can make those beautiful mountains that we see to our left, you're right. My, my left, you're right. If he can see those beautiful mountains, if he can take care of the birds, if he can take care of the foxes, if he can take care of me, can I be honest with you? He will take care of you. I've been through it. I have gone through it. You have too. Don't forget that your God never leaves you. Your God never forsakes you. Your God walks with you. He talks with you. When fear tries to distract you, back up and say, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I'm not going to let this happen because I have a God who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can I tell you, nothing can conquer me because I'm a champion of God. <laughs> oh, I'm fired up. Like, this guy's a little spitfire. 
fun. I am. You know why? I'm so tired of people's destinies being derailed by distractions. Fear is a distraction. How do you have courage in the midst of fear? Believe in your heart that God is with you. Get a handle on what you can't see, and I promise you, He will make you do who you need to be. He will do it. Listen, everything you've been through, all the small things, all the things you think are small in your life, is making the big in you. Can I, can I just end by saying this? You're enough. No, 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 you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Because if you really want that, you see what I'm trying to say. You're enough. The kids you have, you're enough for them. The job you're at, you're enough for them. The church you have is enough to change the atmosphere of this neighborhood and this community. Because guess what? You're enough. The devil wants you to walk home and look in the mirror and say, you're not enough. It should be. Isn't that what we said? I should be further than what I am. I should be where I need to go. Can I tell you? David was forgotten the very first time. It was his time for destiny. David was belittled by his brothers saying, you can't take out his brothers. His family didn't believe in him. The nation didn't believe in him. The giant laughed at him. But you know who believed in David? It was like God. <laughs> no. David believed in David. And until you begin to believe that in you, God has put everything that you need for right now, everything you've seen, everything you've been through, all the things you think are, are junk. Can I tell you, God is going to use your junk to make a miracle. All your ugly, all your good, all your bad, and even your ugly, God is going to use to come out to get, I am a Romans 8 God. That he will work all things out. Come on, God will work all things out to the good of those who are in Christ Jesus. Which means, if you're in Christ Jesus, he's working it out in the background. He's taking care of things that you never thought you could take care of. Things that you thought you were going to have to take care of. He's like, no, 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 no. I got you. I got you. How do I know this? Just recently, um, church, summer, if you don't know, money isn't great. <laughs> People are out on vacation. They ain't giving. They don't care. They're having a blast. And I love that they are. They should. I mean, we're in Colorado. Look how beautiful this is. I ain't down on them, but let me just tell you, I was wondering if I was going to get paid. Freaking out. Oh, God, I hope we can keep our house. And not only that, the taxes in this area went up. So my house went up. So I'm not paying like, like $2,000. i am paying 2800 a month now. Right? I mean, that's what we say. God, I'm starting a church. I'm seeing people say I'm seeing people walk in their purpose and walk in their belonging. And now they're echoing the heart of God to those that are far from them. I mean, things are going great. God's doing great things. Why are you taking me out? Because that's what we say. If I, can I be real? Is that okay that I'm real? I like pastors that are real. And I'm, I want to be real. I said, God, why, why, why would you do this to your servant? At this moment, my tires are like breaking on the car. Everything in my house is breaking. And I go, God, are you ever gonna pull through for me? And God says, do you trust me? Do you trust me? I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know, I, I really, I'm being real, I don't, I don't know. He says, do you trust me? You know what came to my mind, and this is, when my son was eight years old, he was diagnosed with cancer. And I, I looked up at God and 
I was still a youth pastor. And I, I looked at him and I said, no, I, I'm done. I'm done. You take him, I'm done. You take him, I'm done. And I remember sitting in the hospital room. They're like, we can't find anything. It's got to be leukemia. He might have cancer. Just, just prepare yourself. Fear was knocking on my door. You're going to lose him. It's over. The, the son that you were promised in, in college, I'm taking him. The son you promised that, that's going to do great things for me, I'm taking him. The son that you said you're going you're gonna to name Elijah because you wanted to be a big prophet to the world and be a good light to the world, I'm, I'm, the devil kept saying, I'm taking him. I'm taking him. Good news is this. I got out of my fear and started getting an approach of, man, God, I trust you. And God said, if I take him, will you still follow me? I finally got down on my knees. I remember, it was 1 o'clock in the morning. And I got down on my knees and I said, God, whatever you want, you take him, go ahead. Go ahead, do what you want with him. You take him. I believe, you know, me and my wife can make another one if we have to. For whatever you want, your will be done. The next day, my son's body began to produce everything that he needed. All the symptoms, all the things, his fever began to, to break. He began to lay to everything the doctors could so they could find out what was really going on with him. The doctors healed him, and now, can I tell you, he is now an incredible asset to our church. Why? I finally had to lay my life down and get a handle on what I can't see. To get a handle on what I can't see. And so before it got a handle on me. And now can I tell you, when I was going through this time, I said, God, I had short-term memory. If you can take care of my boy, you can take care of this. Not only did I get refinanced my house overnight, not only did my, 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 I got a call from someone saying, I want to put tires on the car. I was like, what, what's going on? I got call after call after call. You know why? Because God is in control. God is working behind the scenes before he, it ever happens. Can I tell you, in your life, God is working, he is faithful and just to do what he needs to do for you today. Believe in him and he'll take you through life, even though it looks dire, even though it looks ugly, God is with you, he's never left you, and he's never forsaken you. Come on, somebody, give God a praise.